we're less than 24 hours away from the event of 1985 with WrestleMania, so you'd think that all eyes would be on the World Wrestling Federation tonight. Well, you'd be wrong. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Tyler Vance Rants. I am your host, Tyler Vance himself, and you're not. It's March 30th, 1985. Last week, a special Piper's Pit was hosted in front of a live New York City crowd in Madison Square Garden, where Rowdy Roddy Piper attempted to interview Mr. T, but was attacked and forced from the ring before it could be properly concluded. The results of Silver Star 85 were reported to us. The Russian bear Ivan Koloff and his nephew, the Russian nightmare Nikita Koloff, defeated the American Dream Dusty Rhodes and the Raging Bull Manny Fernandez to become the new NWA World Tag Team Champions, announcing that they, along with Crusher Khrushchev, would be utilizing the Freebird rule when defending those championships. Avalanche Buzz Tyler defeated Cowboy Ron Bass to become the new NWA Mid-Atlantic Heavyweight Champion, while half of the previous NWA World Tag Team Champions, Dusty Rhodes, defeated Tully Blanchard, ousting him as the longest reigning NWA Television Champion. We'll be tuning in to the WWF first this week, where on Championship Wrestling it is full steam ahead towards WrestleMania with both Vince McMahon and the living legend Bruno San Martino greeting us on commentary for the first match. Jim Harley and Playboy Buddy Rose weighing 275 pounds. 227 pounds. Holy Finkel, Howard. Get your act together, pal. They team up to face off against Captain Loser Albano's men the U.S. Express of Barry Windham and Mike Rotundo in a non-title match next. Rotundo is able to stay ahead of Rose once the match gets underway, the WWF Tag Team Champion eventually able to apply a hammerlock to the Playboy. Buddy Rose then shows just how agile those 227 pounds truly are, as he cartwheels out of the way of Mike Rotundo's attacks before slamming Rotundo's head into the turnbuckle. A body slam follows before Playboy then heads to the second rope, meeting the WWF Tag Team Champion's knees on the way down. Rose tags in his partner, but Harley simply suffers a body slam from Mike Rotundo before the WWF Tag Team Champion hits his lame airplane spin to get the win. The WWF update this week focuses on the Junkyard Dog, who's been known to bust a move when victorious over his opponents, sometimes alongside the animals plucked from the crowd. At tomorrow's WrestleMania, JYD will face off against Greg the Hammer Valentine for a shot at the WWF Intercontinental Championship. And according to Lord Awful Alfred Hayes, should the dog somehow be successful against Valentine, he plans on dancing grand style in front of millions watching worldwide. That is just pure fantasy at its finest, ladies and gentlemen. Paul Roma is in singles action next, taking on newcomer to the WWF, King Kong Bundy, along with Jimmy Hart himself acting as Bundy's manager. Roma is easily manhandled by his much larger adversary in Bundy, who manages to knock Roma out on his feet early on in the match, and he remains out for the duration until he suffers a huge splash in the corner from King Kong Bundy, who then drops a knee on to Paul Roma's head for the three. Mean Gene Okerlund is backstage with Wendy Richter alongside her pop star manager Cindy Lauper, who gets incredibly mad at Richter's upcoming match tomorrow at WrestleMania against the WWF Women's Champion Leilani Kai, especially since Kai herself will be managed by the fabulous Moolah. But that Moolah is a chump. That Moolah is a chump, and this time, I'm not going to pull out a little punch for her. I'm really going to give it to her. Lopper herself spouts so much hate and vile propaganda and hogs up so much of Gene Okerlund's interview time that Wendy Richter isn't even given an opportunity to speak. Now that is just disgraceful behavior from a so-called manager. Rick Savage and Ricky Steamboat go head to head in the next singles match, and immediately Steamboat sends a knee into Savage's face, but Rick Savage responds with a vicious elbow to Ricky Steamboat's face. Heading up to the top rope from there, Ricky Steamboat brings home the win with a flying crossbody. 
Mean Gene Okerlund's next guest backstage is Andre, the so-called giant, who states that he's not ready to be forcibly retired tomorrow afternoon at WrestleMania when he fails to slam the true giant of the WWF, Big John Studd. If you ask this delusional goof, he even states that there's no way he won't slam Stud tomorrow. I go to collect that $15,000 and then I go on vacation. The magnificent Morocco faces off against Jim Powers in the next singles competition, and Morocco is all over Powers as soon as the bell rings. The magnificent one then misses two elbow drops and suffers a backdrop along with a dropkick from his opponent who latches a shoulder lock onto him. But not to worry, as the magnificent Morocco breaks free with a knee. Morocco continues his resurgence with a swinging neckbreaker on Jim Powers before the magnificent Morocco's modified tombstone pile driver gets in the one, two, three. There's been a lot of confusion that WrestleMania is going to be seen on home television. That is not the case. Folks, please, you have to understand that Mean Gene Okerlund is fighting for his life here, trying to explain that you have to buy WrestleMania on pay-per-view. If not that, go to Madison Square Garden or an arena or auditorium that's playing the event. Please, why can't you people understand that? This week's edition of Piper's Pit features the official WrestleMania poster featuring WWF Champion Hulk Hogan and Mr. T. And just look how cocksure that they're the masters of the squared circle with those disgusting grins on their faces. While this doesn't sit well with myself, nor does it sit well with Rowdy Roddy Piper and Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff, the spoilers winners of tomorrow's main event at WrestleMania. You see, we have a new feature now in Piper's Pit. It's called the Hot Seat. Is that not a Rembrandt right there? Oh, how about a banana, Mr. T, you souped up spider monkey? <laughs> we don't want to leave them with egg on their face. <laughs> Come the garden, do it. The main event of WWF Championship Wrestling is another non-title match, as Peter Pompey faces off against the WWF Intercontinental Champion, Greg the Hammer Valentine, who's accompanied by his manager, Jimmy Hart. Pompey immediately suffers a body slam before then receiving knees to the face as he haphazardly tries to charge the hammer in the corner. Greg Valentine remains in complete control for most of the match going forward and easily forces his opponent to submit with the figure four leg lock. The final interview of WWF Championship Wrestling sees Mean Gene Okerlund speak to Captain Loser Albano's men, the WWF Tag Team Champions, Mike Rotundo and Barry Windham, and according to my count, the US Express have officially less than 24 hours as the champions. The captain, of course, has a brain dead take on the matter, stating that while he knows the match at WrestleMania tomorrow against the Iron Sheik and Nikolai Volkov with the WWF Tag Team Championships on the line, the US Express will still come out on top. I hope that they are showing this match of all matches in Iran because the Sheik is going to be our hostage on that day. Mike Rotundo, you greasy haired goof. You talk big now, but just you wait until tomorrow. Crotchety David Crockett and Tony Schiavone greet us as the National Wrestling Alliance's flagship show, Worldwide Wrestling, begins and immediately call the action for the first match. Superstar Billy Graham faces off against Jerkwad Steve Casey one on one. Casey immediately outmaneuvers Graham, latching on a chin lock, but the superstar forces a break by getting to the ropes. From there, Billy Graham grabs hold of Steve Casey and throws him through the ropes down to the floor. But the superstar isn't done. No. Graham rams the jerkwad into the guardrail twice, hopefully straightening out Steve Casey's poor attitude. Back inside the squared circle, Billy Graham drapes Steve Casey over the top rope neck first, and then secures an easy win following an elbow drop. It's come to a head between the raging bull Manny Fernandez and Arn Anderson. After being warned time and time again, the raging bull inserted his nose into Double A's business one too many times, so now he's going to have to pay for it. Arn Anderson gets the first hit in with an arm drag takedown, but then quickly suffers two of the same from Manny Fernandez in response. The pair then begin to trade blows in the middle of the ring before the raging bull applies his beloved wrist lock. 
A massive chop from Fernandez knocks Anderson down, but Manny keeps the wrist lock applied. To get out of the hole, Double A Irish whips the Raging Bull into the corner, who tries to rebound out of it with a flying cross body, but only ends up crashing and burning. Arn Anderson proceeds to slam Manny Fernandez's head into the turnbuckle and follows it up with a body slam. Anderson then heads up to the second rope, but as he comes off of it, the Raging Bull charges with a clothesline. Fernandez then gets his second wind, unloading on Anderson before heading up to the second rope himself and dropping a knee onto his opponent's head. Manny Fernandez begins to deliver fist after closed fist to the head of the helpless Arn Anderson, and for once, the crooked referees of Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling make the right call, as Tommy Young inserts himself and attempts to stop the Raging Bull's assault, but gets thrown aside instead. He's in, so in it. No, come on, Tommy! What the hell do you mean, no? Way to let your bias show for all the world to see, David Crockett, you scumbag. Arn Anderson is able to recover enough following the conclusion of the match to attack Manny Fernandez from behind, and then proceeds to do everything in his power to break the Raging Bull's arm. Crotchety David Crockett continues his unprofessional and biased behavior next as he speaks to the new NWA World Tag Team Champions, Ivan and Nikita Koloff. There is absolutely no way that any tag team in the entire National Wrestling Alliance can beat the Russian Bear, his nephew the Russian Nightmare, or even Crusher Khrushchev for the NWA World Tag Team Championships. Why? Because without knowing the lineup ahead of time, there is no way that any tandem can properly prepare to face off against the Russians. That's why. Oh, and as a reminder, there is still an open challenge to any tag team that thinks that they can prove me wrong. But just as a reminder, TV is always right. Here's why so many eyes are on the National Wrestling Alliance tonight rather than the World Wrestling Federation. Jim Crockett Jr. pulled out all the stops to ensure that we could see this match in its entirety. Magnum TA challenges Chief Wahoo McDaniel for the NWA United States Heavyweight Championship inside a steel cage. Each man is cautious in their approach as the match gets underway until Chief Wahoo McDaniel is able to latch on a headlock before delivering a low blow as a reward for the challenger challenging the champion. Moron TA continues to suffer as Chief McDaniel gouges his beady little eyes out before throwing Magnum into the cage, but the challenger recovers, hitting the champion with a desperate flying forearm. This is not enough to stop the likes of Chief Wahoo McDaniel, who turns the situation back to his advantage with an atomic drop, which has the added benefit of sending Magnum into the turnbuckle. But the challenger immediately responds with a body slam and a dropkick, which result in a near fall. Oh, that was too close for comfort, but I have faith in the Chief, and you should too. It's Chief Wahoo McDaniel's turn to have his head slammed into the turnbuckle and then the cage wall. The following headbutt from Magnum knocks the Chief down, but as the challenger goes to lift the champion up, Chief McDaniel viciously rips his challenger into the steel wall. He then slams Magnum's head into the steel yet again, resulting in a cut forming above Moron TA's right eye. The NWA United States Heavyweight Champion continues his onslaught, employing a body slam before slamming Moron TA's head into the turnbuckle again twice. As Chief Wahoo McDaniel goes for more blood, Magnum TA responds with two kicks, forcing the Chief to make a tactical retreat. Instead, he gets caught and hit with a massive back suplex. One, two, oh, near fall. I believe in the Chief. Moron TA follows up on his momentum. Belly to belly suplex. Kick out, kick out. No! party central backstage as crotchety David Crockett tries to wade his way through the throngs of wrestlers celebrating Moron TA's win over Chief Wahoo McDaniel for the NWA United States Heavyweight Championship. That was hard for me to get through. This, this just can't be real. As for the champion, he himself remains humble. 
and as he should, especially considering that Chief Wahoo McDaniel was attempting to flee the area, and as a challenger, he should have respected the champion's decision and just let him leave the cage, thus they could have a rematch somewhere down the line, considering Chief McDaniel wasn't even properly ready for the match. You can be ready for tomorrow's event of 1985 in pro wrestling, WrestleMania, by hitting the bell, liking the video, and subscribing. And you can also follow me on social media where it is 1985 in pro wrestling all over again. That's all for now. I'll see you tomorrow for WrestleMania. So long. Buddy Rose then shows just how agile those 227. Heading to the top rope from there, Ricky Steamboat brings home the win with a frying. A frying? What's he frying? To ensure that we could see this match in its in. Damn it.